Hello and welcome back to the Bright Founders Talk podcast from Temi. Temi is an international software development company that designs, builds, and delivers software for sustainable businesses and promising startups. My name is Chris, and today's guest is someone who is not only well versed in several areas of business, ranging from sales to data analysis, but is now also the founder and CEO of Psychtel. Meran Gallis, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for inviting me, Chris. Always a pleasure. So just to get the ball rolling, first question, what do you think makes a good boss? That's a great question. I think uh, listening, that will be the first quality. Um, deep dive into the, the problem and look on everyone as an individual and helping them to achieve their targets. And in general, motivate and, and be inspirational. Although I believe that it, motivation should come from the inside, mm. uh, but also just um, show and appreciate the, the, the artwork that your your people, the employees is doing. Uh, I find this very important, uh, at least at side though. That's All my right. point of view. So everyone's a little bit different. You have to kind of manage them a little bit differently. 100%. Everyone is different. Uh, I have a couple of examples during my my time at the uh, startup. I can share this uh, a little bit more afterwards if you'd like. Brilliant, all right. The second one, what do you do to relax after a busy day? I love to come back home, go for a run, you know, relax myself to some sports, move different parts in my body. Uh, hmm. Love to, to read uh, some good stuff, to eat well, to cook. You know, in general, that's, uh, that's what, uh, free my mind after a busy day because it takes time. You know, it takes mm. time. I mean, usually, I, I walk all the time, even when I sleep. So uh, you know, it's. Uh, I guess it just takes some time, but I love what I do. So uh, for me, it's not uh, not something uh, difficult or uh, or strange. So just be healthy. Do some healthy stuff after that <laughs> helps you. I think it's yeah, good, good advice. I think you need you need to balance it. You know, mm. you need to balance it, and I I find running or any kind of sport just have so much more value mentally and physically to the mm. body than uh, than what we may think. All right. And the final one, what did you want to be growing up when you were younger? I wanted to be a basketball player. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good Play careful. basketball. Yeah, but uh, it didn't work out. I broke my hand. I wasn't tall enough. I'm 186. Um, I wanted to be a basketball, a professional basketball player. And I ended up being a founder and CEO of, of a <laughs> startup. You know, it's uh, I wouldn't replace anything. You know, I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the the universe has has some path, uh, I guess, for everyone. Mm -hmm. And this is just where I end up so far. And uh, yeah, and that's where we're heading right now. Maybe you, maybe you can buy a basketball team now in the future. <laughs> Not yet, not yet. Maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. I'm watching the the European Basketball League in Israel. We'll watch with my capital of Aviv. Uh, it's playing in the Euro League and also the NBA. Uh, crazy mm. things going on today in the NBA. You know, crazy things compared to 20 years ago. Interesting. All right, brilliant. Well, now getting into it. So tell me just a little bit about the beginning, university. What did you study and I suppose, again, going back to, you know, being younger and sort of thinking where you wanted to go, did you have an idea like this is, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur or was it something that came later? Did you just study something and hope that it would work out? What, what was your mi your mindset? I always knew that I want to, to do something, to have something of my own. I have some different uh, point of view mm -hmm. on things. And uh, I started noticing this in university. I'm a Bachelor of Science. I studied information systems in Tel Aviv. And, uh, and I did my master's in also in information system in, in, in Serbia and my PhD as well. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is when it comes for continuous study in cloud native environments. That was the core for my studies. Uh, but in the, in the beginning, I, didn't, I, di I just didn't know what I wanted to do. So I started it uh, even before university. I was doing different stuff. I worked at, uh, at security at the airports. Uh, that was the first time that I had some 
attached to security mm. uh, when it comes for national security and human security, which is very, very important. Uh, after we saw some some cases in the past of flights that were hijacked or, or put explosive to explode in the air, maybe in the 70s, also before, so uh, that what led me to, to this type of stuff. But afterwards, I was doing uh, many, many other things. I was uh, working in the spectral division at the Ministry of Communication as a data analyst. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working in the nightlife uh, in Tel Aviv and also in the South America for a while. And actually, I started to study economics in the beginning. My early days, that's the first degree I started, and I also stopped. I, I didn't want to continue after one and a half year because I didn't find it interesting enough. Mm. Um, so I was stopping there and I asked myself, all right, now what? What do I want to do? And um, I start just reading syllabus of different degrees all over. And, and I started my degree in 2015. So uh, I remember when I, I, I read about uh, being a lawyer, being an accountant, computer science, and I find information system is something that's very appealing. I just loved the syllabus. It's kind of the jack of all trades mm-hmm. and master of none mm-hmm. on the one end. But on the other end, you're getting so many tools for uh, do something in the technology space. It might be more in the technical aspect, being a, a software engineer. Uh, being a DevOps, being a penetration tester, doing some security information security stuff. It might be in the marketing space, in, in many different areas when it comes for running a, a, a company in the technology sector. And I just found it interesting. And I studied so much from the, this, this degree. And um, and I finished the degree after uh, um, three years and started my first, started my career, my first adult job in uh in, at the company called Ernst & Young EY today um, at the risk uh, technology risk department so that was the first step of my career interesting what just with that one i thought that was EY was that was your first involvement with security compliance but it wasn't you did something stuff before but it, maybe this was your first sort of serious introduction to that world yeah, because it, it, it's different. Um, you can imagine every time you walk into an airport, you have all of these technology stuff that you see. Sometimes you need to give your uh, handbags and they scan you just stand and they, there is a machine that goes <laughs> circularly all over the place. Yeah. In the past, it, it, it didn't exist. So we used to do some stuff, uh, old school, manual, um, checks. Uh, there, is, there are different machines that actually break down into different uh, uh, segmentation, the, the core material of the things that we scan in. And we were looking for different stuff um, that might be a risk for passengers. And that was the first time I, I work with security that has a direct impact to human security, actually. But it wasn't very much software security like what I'm doing today. It was mm. a different kind of security. But that was the first time I actually get a direct touch into the security space in general. In that case, it was with airport security. Today, it's with, it, this is with uh, security compliance for variety of organizations. We can discuss this later. But uh, that was the first time actually uh, came with security. And the second time was in a while where I was mm. more mature. I was more established. Uh, more, I was more curious. You need to understand over where I live, people going to the military, it's a must. Okay, it's uh, mandatory. So after you discharge from the military, most of the people, what they do is they're going to, to have a job for one or two years, and then they're going to travel the world. So <laughs> I've, met, I've met many, many Israelis traveling. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I've just finished my military service. And I don't know whether you, you get paid lots of money and everyone... Well, Probably after just working in the military for a couple of years, you think I need to, you know, see the world a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't make too much money by working in the military. Oh, you, you don't. Know, it's oh, like okay. three hundred bucks a month. You oh, know, okay. uh, it might that was even uh, even less. 
But uh, this is why everyone after, not everyone, but majority after the military, they go find some job for 12 to 24 months, save up some money, and just go spend all their money in, in, in cheap places like uh, South America, Vietnam India. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, uh, but it's fun. Had that experience. It also helps you build your character. You know, you're by yourself in the world, you're just traveling, see some wonderful places, um, go out of the bubble. You know, uh, mm -hmm. of, of where you grew up and, and study and everything. It's actually before the studies. And after people finish their, their trip, they're going back and then they need to decide what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So the next step will be, okay, we're going to study something, but what do we want to study? And in my case, it was information systems uh, because I just thought it's the future. You know, I don't see technology going backwards. It's only going... Forward. You can, that like we can assume today that AI and ChatGPT 5 is going to be more intelligent than ChatGPT 4. It's not going to be less intelligent. So mm. I just see this progress and technology is everywhere. And I believe that uh, this space is going to grow massively. And, um, you know, I, I read some book about uh, Brief of Humankind. And there are some revolutions, huge revolutions during the, the human's history was maybe the beginning it was the agriculture revolution when we stopped going from different places and, and start staying in the same place and grow our own food and then we had the industrial revolution moved more into cities um and then we had uh, uh, all of the ele electrical revolution and afterward we can see uh, uh, computers came up so we have the hardware which that was more in ibm uh, intel and then we see software which microsoft was leading the world and then we saw some internet stuff uh, like Google uh, that came and indexing all the world into a single place. And in Amazon, like the biggest e-commerce. And then we see AWS as like very unique business model for the cloud. And the cloud was another revolution. And we can look today at the AI as the next revolution, which catch everyone in different aspects. So I just find it super interesting to live in at these times. Mm -hmm. and 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 just see the rapid massive exponential development of of technology everywhere with ey for example your your first involvement in security compliance i'm just curious is there anything that you learned in that that period i think it was 3 years roughly you were there is there anything you learned that you still use today in your company yeah many things um i was doing consulting over there beginning i thought i can i consult something which you know i'm only working for three months can i be a consultant really can i consult anyone with three months of experience uh, but the truth is you need to study a lot and that should come from from the inside you really need to be curious or inquisitive or have some some kind of will to raise your own bar and, and ask the right questions and read more about different aspects. At my case, it was working with chief technology officers and chief information security officers. So they were very smart people, very intelligent, very experienced. They speak fast on many different aspects when it comes for software development, lifecycle, CI CD pipelines, um, security practices, and more. And then just understand that they need to study a lot. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I learned that um, when you take a project, it's okay to lead uh, uh, to lead projects, even if you're not sure in the beginning, but to learn and, and, and get around the best team of individuals that you can find and then really walk backwards, understand what's uh, our success going to look like in, in this specific project and break it down backwards. So, like smoke, some sort of reverse engineering and understanding what we want to do today, uh, being super organized when it comes. And working at such a huge uh, firm, uh, there are so many different global assets and knowledge that sharing between different countries. So understanding that the world is massive, it has hundreds of offices around the globe, hundreds of thousands of employees working mm. in a big enterprise, um, it gave me some unique point of view on the one end. And on the other end, it gave me the opportunity to learn from and see from first sight the main 
needs and pains in the engagements that I took part, working with the same personas of of startups, technology companies, mainly in the United States, in Israel as well, and and just see that there is a very big pain for these people. They have different stuff that they need to do. It's something that holding their business back, it's burning a lot of their time, and they need to put many resources to, to accomplish that. And to be fully honest, when it comes for CTOs, they don't, many times they don't have the time, the resources, Mm-hmm. Know the will to really deep dive and understand, uh, like, oh, that's a uh, compliance regulation is very interesting. I really want to to read this 184 pages mm-hmm. and break it down the criteria and the point of focus so I can design my own controls. Say no one ever, you know. So they, right. they, they look at someone that can take them through, and that was my belief that when no one takes it through, that's a very big hurdle. And they 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 have a, they develop the mentality only to to check the box. They need it fast. They don't really care from the process. They just want the certification or the attestation report or whatsoever, so they can prove for their uh, uh, customers that look we are compliant. Now we can move forward with the deal when it comes for uh, uh, for small to medium sized businesses and startups. Is that what sort of inspired you? Then, if we move into Psychtail AI. Is that what inspired you to start, or was it something else as well? Actually, it was that. I, I just saw some pain. Um, I did some entrepreneurial stuff when I was in uh, in college, and I believe that those might be a very good product market fit when it comes for this space. I was a domain expert at this time. After three years, I had 100 customers that I ran engagement every single year. I was a manager. I had my own team. Traveling the world, I see different problems in very small companies and startup of 5, 10, 50 employees mm. and large enterprises um, that we work with uh, and, and companies uh, um, that acquired by uh, tech giants like Google, Salesforce, Checkpoint. So I just experienced and, and had my own experience and, and the access to for these things. And then I believed, okay, there is something that could be so much better, so much more simpler, so much automated, and really increase the value, save the time, and cut the total cost of, of compliance. I didn't know everything from the beginning, uh, clearly. I, mm. I built a pitch deck just to run some things to myself. And actually, I opened a blog. I called it SOC2 blog, um, the compliance guy. And mm. I just uh, uh, start writing my own articles and content to put it out there because in 2018 there was almost none of content and knowledge about SOC 2 which was very relevant for startup that they mean to sell into the United States and North America um so this is how I started I didn't I, I wasn't thinking about um uh, you know establishing and creating a startup I was thinking about let's put this knowledge out there and who knows maybe it might bring more work to EY uh, people will want to read they mm. might need some help, and they were worried child. So that was the initial days. Brilliant. Okay. So it's kind of it sounds quite organic. It was something you're just passionate about, and it just sort of forms naturally, which is quite cool. In that case, then, what was some of the struggles? Because it seems like you're trying to solve people's problems, but what problems did you have starting this venture? I just start by saying I have problems every day until this day. <laughs> okay. So yeah, problems sure. never go away. Okay, they just replacing like different problems replacing with new problems. <laughs> they get um, bigger and bigger. <laughs> they get bigger and bigger every time, you know, and, and with more with more coming with uh, uh, more directions to you. Life is a struggle, you know, but what you can do about that? You can just have a positive approach, have a positive approach about things. Um, and in the early days, Look, I, I, I actually I was focusing more on the technology and how do I gonna build a product myself. Um, I didn't focus on on sales, uh, which that's strange. But today I have different perspective. But in the early days, I was just thinking, okay, I, I need to build the best product out there. I need to have some minimal valuable product so I can shift fast for design partners. I need now to find design partners. So mission. First mission is to find a partner, a CTO, mm-hmm. that will be able to lead the technology aspect. 
and I was building all of the uh, entity relationship diagram and, and I was doing product stuff in order to prepare the ground for the CTO. So it took mm -hmm. me three and a half months until I find someone that I uh, thought is, is very big talent and had the same mindset as, as myself. In the same time, I was looking for design partner and get then I got some requests, some leads. Someone uh, came to me and sent me uh, an email and asked if I can consult, if, if they that they left the wine and if I can help them get their sock too, because they have an auditor was a wine that in those days and uh, they don't really have any anyone managing stuff. So this was my actually my first customer. I, I was like by myself. Now I had a customer, I was building the foundation material and, and product uh, material for, for, for the development. And I will start doing consulting and see the problem from the other side. And then I understood, okay, I need someone to take the consulting from me because that was the first customer. Then I got another LinkedIn message from another customer prospect, which also became a customer. So I see that customers start coming at my way, but so I need to take the, the all of the consultation and, and, and service and, and support. So I recruited a product manager that she she was a domain expert also. She came from the space of security compliance with a young mindset and 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 the same vibe that I had. And she took it from me so I could focus on the product, but mm -hmm. I knew that I want to put her in product. So I recruited another another wonderful uh, employee for video and she was leading all of the support division. And now I had a product director, I had a CTO and I had a compliance success director. So that was the foundation. Uh, and Pramit just keep going, you know, uh, legal, mm -hmm. finance, recruitment, funding, see that you're hitting your targets, see that the product actually works, you know, eventually you need to make things work and, mm -hmm. uh, and everything took places, big problems. In the early days, I didn't have any sales organization, didn't have marketing organization. I got those stuff only in the second year. So you need to be a jack of all trades. You don't have any work-life balance at all. Uh, if you love and passionate about, I don't, I don't think it's, it's going to interest you too much, but, um, most likely you're going to forget about that. Um, you can see some damage in your personal life. I personally, I got divorced, but. You know, some cases it's just life. You need to have some prioritization of what you want to achieve, and uh, sometimes it doesn't work out. So I paid some personal price on the one end, but on the other end, I had a huge and like wonderful time and very unique, unique experience, and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I learned so much in the last. From that, it sounds like that you feel it's more important to focus on the product to begin with to have a good product rather than well not rather than but it's important to have the product and then the other stuff will kind of just fall into place after yes and no i believe actually to maximize value for your customers at the minimum time now if that's mean that you're gonna have a very minimal product and you're gonna do in the early days many things uh, uh manually mm -hmm. Personally, I don't believe that customers depend on the product and the space, but the customer wouldn't care too much as long as you deliver what you uh, you committed for them. The problem is that it's not scalable. You know, you, you can't scale from one to 10 customers to 100 or to 1,000 or to 10,000 of customers doing everything manually. Uh, but you do want to see where to focus your efforts. You don't want to build products no one ever going to use like you don't want to optimize some engineering problem that uh, shouldn't exist for the first place. So in that case, I would say, think about what value can I bring to customers? Are they willing to pay for it? And how can I maximize value at minimum time? And the technology, that's a tool that should take you for the customer, but you shouldn't start like instantly from the tech. You should start with the customers and be very obsessed with the customers issues and customers problem and then walk backwards through technology and see how technology can help and boost all of this ecosystem to actually deliver for your customer and address his pains or his needs or his jobs to be done so that's what i started to do the platform looked awful in the early days 
So many things were manual. Um, different stuff happened behind the scenes. You know, I remember that there was a, an assign place in the platform so you can assign a task for some owner. But we did it that the architecture to support to uh, the, the assignee module. So it was just a drop, like uh, not even a drop, but like a text box that you just type a name. Like the simplest thing that you can put over there, it was embarrassing. But uh, on the other end, we, we saw demand and we wanted to move fast and we didn't want all the, anything back. So we just deliver something and then we keep improving the product based on customer feedbacks, mm -hmm. always customer feedbacks. We're doing customer interviews all the time based on our uh, expertise and our knowledge. We are domain expert in the space and based on the benchmark and, and trends and what we see going out there. Well, what do you think is the most innovative feature of your platform? What sets you apart from other sort of people in the area? Look, I think our un first we have a unique value proposition in general because we provide one roof for everything startups need to get compliant and stay compliant when it comes for uh, the best security compliance automation platform for professional consulting, uh, which I brought from uh, the methodology from the big four. Um, so our professional consulting is a world-class team of experts that can actually drive and help our customers from the from day one all the way to the all the way to the finish line and afterwards in doing penetration testing and audit everything in a single proof that's a very unique value proposition because we can guarantee about timeline uh, that it will address our customers' needs about the quality of the work mm. and about the cost and the best value for money uh, so we can commit for everything. And when it comes for tech, there are so many different features that we've been doing. I, 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 when I look at the platform today compared for three years ago, it's so massive improvement. And you can see that the platform built by passionate expert that did this stuff by themselves, that work by themselves on the platform and actually see all of the small things and all the bits and bytes that make a platform from being good to being amazing. Uh, we implemented so much automation, hundreds of integration. We're using AI to automate security question meals. We collect evidence automatically. We're showing non-compliance issues in real time. And we're actually shifting from, if you remember, I mentioned before that CTOs had the mindset that only checking the box because they didn't believe in the process. Mm. So today we show them real time, look, you have a problem over here and over here and over here and over here. Now you need to address it fast because leave, leave the compliance, leave the SOC too. You do need to be compliant because you have legal commitment, because that's a regulation, because you want to sell more whatsoever. Mm. But you have a real risk. What happened if someone told you that you're no longer an administrator for your production environment in AWS? Would you miss a heartbeat? I would. Because, you know, I, I will think that someone might hijack my AWS production account. And you don't want to be there. Believe me, no one wants to be there. So we making sure that companies don't leave their old door open. They close the door. They lock it. And they do everything in their power to, on the one end, build security and maintain trust for their customers, on the one end. Decrease the risk for their uh, uh, customer people and, and companies that are working with them. Uh, but on the other end, don't put business behind. You know, you need to find the balance between security compliance and, and, and boosting business. So I think that's what we try to do. Uh, we're incorporating many different customer feedbacks using our expertise as we have a research and development, not only in R&D, but also when it comes for the space of security compliance and using AI in the platform. And you can all, all already see that and and one more thing uh, now the ai regulation is coming into into full force it's already happening in, in the european union mm. um, as you might have been seeing yourself because ai is moving so fast and we see it becoming super intelligence uh, yeah you know scary we, sometimes it's very scary you know that i've uh, Heard some someone, a genius guy in the AI space, maybe one of the best AI uh, personas in the space, uh, in this space. And his main concern is that we're moving so fast, and companies like OpenAI and Google and all of the tech giants moving so fast when it comes for AI, and putting their R&D budgets 
like 99% of the budget on, on bringing new shift fast and develop new features, but they almost, they barely put any resources or, or budgets on safety mm. when it comes for AI. Now, as we understand it, it's going into super intelligence, becoming, and might get more autonomies, uh, like might get more power, uh, might understand more things, might manipulate people in the future. Um, I think so we, we understand that we need to invest more in trust and more in regulation and companies need to allocate more budgets for that. But also the regulators around the globe need to build the proper regulations that on the one hand won't hold companies back from utilizing such a revolutionary technology. Mm -hmm. But on the other end, think about what's going to be 10, 20 years from now. You know, we don't want to be in a situation when technology and AI came into singularity and suddenly we are not controlling it, it controlling us. So uh, <laughs> regulation is, is at the moment at least is maybe one of the best things that I can think of uh, addressing these risks uh, because companies want to make profits and that's not, in many cases, it's not direct uh, uh, alignment with, uh, with the humans, uh, humankind expectations. Mm. Um, so just interesting. And we are supporting the first AI certification. It's called ISO 42001. That's an AI management system. Uh, Cytel supporting that and leading the way oh. when it comes for uh, also assisting our customers, not only with security certification and regulation, privacy regulation, but now also AI regulation. All right. Brilliant. Well, um, we've just gone a little bit over time, so I'll let you go. I imagine you must be extremely busy. So uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we wish you all the best with the future success for the Skytail, uh, Psychtail AI. Thank you very much, Chris. It was a pleasure. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me.